Welcome to another episode of Elevated Minis. My name is Cody and in this video we're going to be painting up some wolves and practicing our wet blending. Hey guys, how's it going? So this video was requested from a follower who saw my wolves on Instagram and asked if I would mind showing how I did it. Fortunately, I have a huge backlog of Zombicide miniatures up in my closet from the Cool Mini or Not Time Machine, and I had a few to paint. If there's anything from that fantasy Zombicide universe that you would like to see me paint, please leave a comment and let me know. It's really helpful to know what you guys want to see more of. But if you guys are new here, if you want to learn something new or pick up a new technique, I hope you'll consider subscribing, hitting that like button and notification bell. It really helps by putting me on a path to being able to create more videos for you guys. And before I get started, I just got a new camera that I'm learning how to use, so if my footage is a little off in spots, I know I'm trying to figure it all out. The camcorder I used before did a good job, but I wanted to get a little more control of things with the camera, which means some growing pains. So if you guys have any advice on that, please leave a comment. It'll be incredibly helpful. With that little bit out of the way, let's get started. So I started off priming this wolf in a light gray with the airbrush, but you could use any light colored primer you have. Um, you just don't want to use black because it's difficult to base coat light colors over a dark primer. I'm not saying you can't do it, but the entire underside of this model is a light color and it saves you a headache later on. So like I was saying in the intro, we're going to be practicing some wet blending on this model, and while that may be a scary term for some, on a model like this it's pretty difficult to screw up. So on the wet palette we're going to use three colors. Um, I'm using Eschen Grey, Celestra Grey, and Flayed One Flesh. I also mixed in a little bit of retarder medium into each color just to slow the drying time a bit as well as a tiny bit of water uh, but not too much because you want the coverage to be pretty solid. Um, I may have over thinned the Eschen Grey just a little bit but it turned out fine. I started the blend by using Eschen Grey on the top of the wolf and uh, once I had a general idea of where I wanted it to end I laid down a layer of Celestra Grey in the midsection. After sketching out where I wanted those two colors to be, I started to mix the two of them together by swirling the area around with my brush, using a stippling motion, or sometimes I'm just pulling the paint either up or down into the midsection of the wolf until I'm happy with the blend. Um, and that's all there really is to it. Um, I'm keeping the wet palette in the background just so you can see how sloppy this process can be, but it's also a lot of fun because you're just slapping paint around until you're happy with it. I used the same process to blend from the legs into the midsection with Flayed One Flesh into the Celestia Gray. The biggest thing to keep in mind is you want to avoid having a hard line where two colors meet and make sure you clean your brush before going from a dark color to a light one and vice versa. We're really only working the midtones here. But uh, any imperfections you may see are going to be solved when we lay down the wash in the next step. With our blending dry, we're going to use our trusty friend Agrax Earth Shade and slap this over the entire model. Just try not to let it pool anywhere you don't want it because you can cover up those details if you use too much. Um, just use another brush to soak up any excess if this happens to you. You only want this in the recesses of the model which will help make the fur really stand out and pop. Uh, this also really helps smooth out any of your blending imperfections if you had some. After giving our wash about 20 minutes to dry, it's time to pick out the fur details with the dry brush method and for that I started using Flayed One Flesh 
over the entire model. To dry brush, just get some paint on your brush, wipe away most of it on a paper towel, and use light strokes over the model, and it'll pick up all those raised details. I wanted to add just a little bit more of a highlight on the top of the wolf as well as lighten the paws a bit more so uh, using the same dry brush technique I use pallid witch flesh. And moving on to the torn fleshy bits in the tongue, uh, I used Bugman's Glow. If the wolf you are painting is still intact before the inevitable zombie apocalypse, you could ignore this part. And with those same areas, I darkened them up a bit with a wash of Karaberg Crimson, which I totally did out of frame, and I apologize for that. I'm still working on a good monitoring solution, but I'll get there. And to give the illusion of exposed muscle fiber, I used a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Flayed One Flesh with a fine tip brush and tried my best to paint thin lines inside the exposed area. Once that dried, I came back around and did a few more final lines with straight flayed one flesh to give the fiber a bit more depth. For the exposed rib cage and teeth, I started by base coating them with Rhinox Hide, which typically is a color I always start with when painting this kind of thing. It just really helps separate the individual teeth and bones from each other for when we go to highlighting with Ushabti bone in the next step. If you wanted to take the bones and teeth a step further, you could always highlight up with Screaming Skull or Pallid Witch Flesh if you'd like, but I knew I would be covering this up with blood later. The next thing I went to was dotting the eyes with white. I probably wasn't as neat as I'd like to be here, but in this instance it's okay because I'll be going over this with a wash and it'll look like the eyes are glowing just a little bit brighter. Doing eyes on camera is so nerve wracking for me. So after giving that a minute to dry, I pulled out Cassandora Yellow, which is a nice orangey yellow wash, and just plopped a dot of it on the eyes. Uh, and if you don't have this color, you could always use a yellow or orange ink, and you'd get the same kind of effect. I wanted to make the eyes pop out a little bit more, so I took the Cassandora Yellow and just mixed it with a little bit of white that I still had on my palette to make a pale yellow color. Once that dried, I tried to be much more careful with these next white dots, and if you happen to mess up, don't worry about it. This is a zombie wolf, throw some blood on it and it will be just fine. <laughs> I wanted to keep the base pretty simple for these guys, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it here, but if you wanted to take it a step further, check out my Earthy Bases video that will be up in the cards on the top right. But uh, pick your favorite basing paste here. My current favorite is European Thick Mud from Vallejo because there's a lot of different textures that pop out from this stuff, and it looks pretty natural to my eyes. But uh, 
I then used Agrax Earthshade to bring out those details. I let that dry and then used a dry brush of Steel Legion Drab before going to a final dry brush highlight of Carrick Stone. To clean up the rim of the base, I used Rhinox Hide before gluing on a Swamp Tuff from Army Painter to finish it off. This wouldn't be a zombie wolf without adding some blood, so I took some blood for the blood god and with the most frayed brush in my collection and put it around the mouth, paws, and wounds of the wolf, as well as a few spots on the base and on the swamp tuft itself. I may have gone a little overboard with this, but do the blood to your taste. That finishes it up for this model. Let me know what you guys think of it down in the comments. Also, be sure to check out and follow my other social channels. I try to post updates of what I'm working on on my Facebook page, and I uh, put my finished models on my Instagram. And uh, like I said in the beginning, if you learned something new, picked up a new technique, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and hit the like button. All these things help grow the channel and make it possible for me to create more regularly. Until next time, guys, thanks again.